Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Min. Um, thank you for joining us and thank you for inviting us. Um, just to, to sum up this top topic, we have Linux presentations, safety and security. But fundamentally, I want to talk about how RISC-V started and grown up. Some of you may know the history. Um, it's just a refresher and how the, the RISC-V processors have, have, have evolved over the last uh, five years or so, or 10. So moving on, just a quick word from my sponsor. Uh, and this is a pure play CPU IP vendor. So the, uh, we only do CPUs. We're public. Uh, we've been public a long time based in Taiwan. We've started the risk five uh, journey um, as a founder, a founding member. Uh, we work with the um, open source. We actually shipped our first vector processor um, last year. Um, and quick facts, that we were based in Taiwan, about 250 engineers, a um, lot of us being an engineer. So this is where we see currently our market space, where we see RISC-V. Uh, we start from all the way from the edge, very small devices, power monitors, uh, security cameras, two more um, biometric security. And we're starting to see more RISC-V getting embedded into 5G macro, um, data centers and the small cells. So the nice thing about this is RISC-V architecture wise, it spans a big breadth of the market um, with designs from single cores to thousands of cores. And this slide is already out of date. It's 40 nanometer to seven. We're starting to see five nanometer designs. However, AI, either whether it's an edge or the data center is a big um, a draw market for RISC-V. So how did we all begin? Um, in 2010, students and professors at Berkeley sought a controller they could use for their research. They had problems with using commercial instruction sets, either for business reasons or for technical reasons. So they created RISC-V. Um, I think it was a three month summer effort. Um, in 2015, RISC-V Foundation was created to further promote RISC-V architecture. Here's a quick timeline of some of the test chips that led up chips and the cores that led up to RISC-V founding. So what's RISC-V? What's so great about it? One key strength of RISC-V is modular approach. You only implement the cores and features that you need um, to get your work done. So it's, it's ideal for embedded applications where you don't really need to over-design a core because you don't know the application. A lot of it, application is known up front. You can make design trade-offs. There's a minimal required architecture, RV32i, RV32e, or RV64i, even I think 128-bit uh, architecture is sort of defined. But we start with that and we could add a lot of extra features. Here's some of the most popular features. Um, M for hardware multiplier, atomics, floating point, single double precision, and then the compression instructions, DSP SIMD extensions, and finally um, the vector extension that's being great adoption, seeing great adoption in the AI space. So development platforms. We started off with small FPGA boards and companies like Sci5 did some early test chips and they have a boards that have test chips. I think they have a board that's uh, hand-shaped. And lastly, I actually found a RISC-V development board at Walmart um, for about $30. So the development boards are everywhere. It's out there um, and you can start prototyping and software development. So here's a risk development. Andes and Sci5 and many other companies offer commercial grade risk 5 CPU. And these CPUs start from very small microcontrollers that are like 15, 20,000 gates, all the way up to millions and millions of multi-core vector processors. Um, we've, we've been seeing a lot of the RTOSs, Bayer being used early on. We're seeing a shift to more commercial RTOS and Linux in our customer base. So here's a quick overview of the pipelines and the features. 
And I would say we'll use Andy's uh, CPU for some of this. Andy's came to market with a 25 series. 25 series, it was a five-stage pipeline risk five processor. And it came in the various flavors. Uh, well, as a base processor, something for signal processing, and then A series to be able to run, has MMU, so you could run Linux and more fully featured operating system. Um, finally, with the great adoption last year, we saw that uh, there was a chance to enhance our course um, for more data-centric applications where data boom and more, more important. So we kept the basically processing pipeline as is from the 25 series. We improved the caches, local memories, bus arc interfaces, and made a 27 series. So we're moving on from just a simple processing to more higher performance data movers. Next thing is we saw a deeply embedded processor um, need and we in 22 processor, it's a simple two-stage pipeline. Um, and it's, it's really designed to target Cortex M0 and plus market where you need a very small, minimal 32-bit controller. Um, we, we spend a lot of time optimizing the foot core for the process, both performance and for the minimizing code size. So RISC-V with the right extensions could get below Cortex-M0's code size, which has sort of been a golden standard in our market. Moving on. So this is the, our first, um, and I, we believe industry's first vector processor, NX27V. In our terminology, it's a controller, 64 bits and 27 series. Remember that we had to enhance data movement and reason we did the 27 series with data movement is to be able to feed that vector unit. So we use our ACE custom instruction extension, custom extensions to create a separate load store unit in addition to vector load store unit to increase the bandwidth. So it's based on our 25 series scalar pipeline with the new, new vector pipeline plus multiple load store units. And it's available with the, the support with five vector 0.8 and 1.0 RC specification. And of course, we'll, we'll uh, upgrade this as the uh, vector, with five vector specification upgrades. Lastly, and this is so more exciting, we're starting to see more commercial grade super scalar processors being available. Um, for us, that's the 45 series. It is a two dual issue super scalar processor. The pipeline is actually not this, it's not 100% correct, but it's it's listed there, for example. There's a two issue in order pipeline, um, eight stage pipeline processor. It comes in multiple flavors being embedded. It's important to support both the RTOS and Linux flavors, single core and multi-core versions. So this is available to customers and it's been shipping for about six months now. So we're now getting more processors that could has enough warmth, enough performance to run Linux um, at a decent performance where human interactions were necessary. As Itai mentioned, uh, I spent long, a lot of my career at MIPS uh, previously and at MIPS embedded systems. Uh, one of the things that we worried about with people designing TVs and the top boxes was response times. As you could, you could all realize when you click on a internet link and you're waiting, do you blame the hardware or do you blame the internet? Most people blame the hardware. So CPU has to be faster. So how do we wrap this all hardware around? Uh, we have many partners providing um, IP, Dover being one of the good partners, but we have many other partners providing IP that people, our customers and SOC designers could build an SOC capable of running Linux or other embedded applications and operating systems. There are many software environment development environments. Um, some are this specific, most are RISC-V general case. And then many of the design service partners we work with to provide startups to get the quicker time to the market or established companies to really squeeze the performance out of the uh, any core designs. 
there's sort of RTOS operating system that's available that runs on Andes and Linux RISC V processors, um, like Nucleus, R3 RTOS from Amazon now, ThreadX from Microsoft, or I think its name is a little different. However, um, there's a free RTOS is one of the big ones. Um, it's a RTOS for MCU, many support. Um, it's tickless for the power, uh, works with Amazon Web Services. So it's actually a great operating system as well. Um, next is Linux. So we maintain our own um, Linux tree in-house as well as uh, pushing it to the head of tree. Uh, reason for this is we support a Linux version that runs on our processor. So we maintain a version we know works. Uh, and then we'll work with customers to either use our Linux kernel or the uh, from header tree. Um, there is cache coherent, multi-core support, uh, LTP certified, and that we have, we support many device drivers for our peripheral platform. Um, as the kernel is very stable for Linux now, um, it's about increasing the, uh, the drivers. Uh, you want, when you plug in that device, uh, you want it to work. So many kernel features, we have trace features for developers debug, a lot of performance analysis features, um, power management, our core support, many different power management, including power break to be able to throttle the CPU uh, under software control. Uh, many kernel modules support IV and IV64 relocation types, greater than one gigabyte high mem support and hot plug. So, we have many um, off-the-shelf commercial distributions, open source distributions, and we also maintain and optimize in-house RISC-V and Andes. Lastly, this is sort of a few examples of customers we've dealt with in the last uh, probably 12 months uh, that have, have adopted RISC-V. When this has adopted uh, and this was five CPUs for the ASSPs. So it's getting more traction in the standard microcontrollers. Um, T-Link has IoT and wireless audio using our DSP enabled RISC five processor, which is a P extension uh, RISC five processor. PicoCom has many uh, CPU architecture using our N25F cores and AI accelerators for server space with many um, vector enabled cores going into uh, server AI applications. Um, LLVM, I should mention, um, is available. It's integrated into our tools. So we're now seeing much more adoption of LLVM usage over GCC. So that sort of concludes my um, presentation. Um, any questions? Actually, I see to see something in Q and A. Yep. There is one in the Q and A. So, if John, if you would like to jump on out there and answer the question in the Q and A, that would be great. Thank sure. you for your wonderful presentation and the innovations you're doing with Risk Five. Thank you.